Pixar itself must be a bundle of emotions as the animation studio tries to reclaim its former glory. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Inside Out. I'm joy. This is sadness. That's anger. What? This is disgust. Uh, and that's fear. Ah! We're Riley's emotions. <laughs> These are Riley's memories. They're mostly happy, you'll notice, not to brag. I wanted to maybe hold one. What happened? Sadness. She did something to the memory. Is everything OK? I don't know. Take it back, Joy. Great. Joy, no, Let's wait. Go. The core memories. Ah! No, 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 no. Ah! <laughs> Can I say that curse word now? Yes, ironically, the studio which claimed it would never make a sequel got sidetracked by them. In fact, Pixar has a dicey history with sequels, as it was the threat of making Toy Story 2 without them that forced the then-fledgling animation studio to stay in business with Disney, even though the two companies weren't getting along. Eventually, in 2006, Disney fully acquired Pixar, and even though Pixar insisted it was still semi-autonomous, it became sequel-centric after the acquisition. Toy Story 3, Cars 2, Monsters University, and coming soon, Finding Dory, Toy Story 4, and The Incredibles 2. The box office numbers for these sequels are pretty impressive, with Toy Story 3 Pixar's most successful film ever. But their new focus on sequels has cost Pixar some of its prestige, allowing its step-sibling Disney Animation to make some big moves. Frozen and Big Hero 6 not only dominated at the box office, but also won the last two Best Animated Feature Oscars. In fact, Frozen surpassed Toy Story 3 to become the most successful animated film of all time. But while Pixar sat out 2014, Disney Animation is sitting out 2015, giving Pixar just the opening they need. They're releasing two original films this year, The Good Dinosaur for Thanksgiving and this summer, Inside Out. In true Pixar fashion, Inside Out is an ambitious project that hopes to be both intellectual and mainstream, ironically calling to mind some of the classic animated shorts from friendly competitor Disney Animation on how the mind and body work. And let's not forget that the sitcom Herman's Head already laid the groundwork for this idea as well. Speaking of television, Inside Out is a little light on star power for a Pixar film, going with mostly TV talent. There's former Saturday Night Live performers Amy Poehler and Bill Hader, The Office's Phyllis Smith and Mindy Kaling, now over on Hulu with The Mindy Project, plus Comedy Central's Louis Black. And alas, it would seem that even here, sequelitis is at work, as Pixar already has a short plan for the Blu-ray release of Inside Out entitled Riley's First Date. But while everyone might be able to relate to being highly emotional, will these personified versions of emotions ironically keep us from making an emotional connection with Riley herself? So Inside Out is an interesting case, because while I think it succeeds wildly as an introduction to Psychology 101, I think it fails miserably as a film. Now, this is my non-spoiler review. My spoiler review will also go up today, uh, so I'm going to try and explain what I mean by that without giving anything away about the film. And I'd, I guess the crux of my argument is that this is a message first and entertainment second. And with filmmaking, it's supposed to be the other way around. Uh, basically, Inside Out uh, swaps its A and B storylines. But even worse than that, I mean, that implies still some kind of structure. And Inside Out is as out of control creatively as the emotions in Riley's head. Uh, and logic isn't just mi uh, missing from the filmmaking uh, process here, but from the movie itself, literally. Yes, while I was watching Inside Out, I was like, something's missing here. This isn't a complete picture of the human mind. I just, I, I couldn't put my finger on it. I was like, this is not a complete picture. So I thought about it and I thought about it and I just couldn't crack it. Uh, so I was Googling emotions. I was like, what are the, give me the list of emotions because I know that someone's absent. And lo and behold, I found an article talking about Inside Out and how they had originally intended to have a sixth emotion in Riley's head and that would be logic. And I was like, Eureka! It was a really bad idea to cut logic out of this movie. Because emotions are governed by logic. Uh, and I think that logic could have represented Riley. Heck, more than represented her, I think it should have been Riley inside her own head. Uh, you know, the voice in our head when we're kind of like, when we talk to ourselves, when we're thinking things through. Because Riley was really absent from her own persona. 
uh, which made it very difficult, difficult to not only emotionally connect with the character, but the film itself. There just was this detachment. And I think it's like, you know, the really popular idea of an angel and a devil on your shoulder, right? Uh, which is, I guess, kind of like the origin of this idea. This, this idea evolved from that. But the fun thing about the angel and the devil on your shoulders is that you talk to them. They talk to you. There's a dialogue. You are wrestling with your emotions. As I said, logic governs emotions. But here, the angel and the devil are talking amongst themselves, and you are just left out. And I think that ultimately doesn't ring true as representative of who we are. I mean, we all we all are emotional, but we are, that's not all we are, right? There, there's like a, I guess, a soul missing. Like, emotions are reactionary. What was, where, where's the driving force of Riley that wasn't in the film? I mean, we're not, we're not all Jaegers controlled by an argumentative team of five desperately in need of a team building exercise. Uh, now, that said, uh, what I think is the fatal flaw of the film, I still did enjoy uh, a number of elements in the movie. Uh, for instance, and again, no spoilers here, but I really liked the first 15 to 20 minutes of the film. They were brilliant, and I was very happy. I was like, whew, looks like I'm going to like this film after all, and then it just totally fell apart. I'd say when Joy and Sadness start their little road trip, again, I don't want to give anything away, that's when the movie starts to go off the rails. But the beginning of the film is excellent. Uh, Pixar at its best. And I think when you start watching this movie, if you haven't already, you'll be like, that Grace is crazy. This movie's great. And then you'll be like, oh yeah, it is, it is kind of boring. More on that in a moment. Now, I also uh, really liked the world building, uh, which I think did as good a job as possible when trying to depict such a complex and difficult and abstract subject as the human mind. I also liked the world building of San Francisco. I thought that was very well done, too. I thought it was very well realized. So I liked that. I also like the animation. You know, we talked recently about the good dinosaur and how the animation looks really wonky there with the dinosaurs, but here, this was classic Pixar. Everything was beautifully realized in the mind and in the real world, but the best of all was by far and away Joy. Joy is a fantastic character. I love how she glows. I love the little pixelation of her skin. And Amy Poehler does such a wonderful and nuanced job providing her voice. Uh, and I also thought the expressiveness of Joy was really good. It was just, it was uh, the full package. That character, more than anybody else in the movie, just really came together. I was like, that's a winner. And then I also liked Riley, uh, even though uh, I think that Riley, because uh, I, I wanted to get to know her better, but was, what was very odd about Riley, uh, and this occurred to me after I watched the film, was that Riley is like not emotionally where she should be uh, as a tween. She actually, I think, had the emotional uh, capacity and maturity of like a six or seven year old. And I, I don't want to give anything away. I think that's you could imply that that's part of the message of the film, but she just seemed, um, you know, a little bit not developed enough for the age that she was supposed to be in the film. And I think that also made it hard to emotionally connect because she didn't seem like a real, fully realized character. Uh, I mean, I know that Joy had to be, uh, but I think that Riley needed to be as well. And because it just kind of created the idea that Joy was Riley, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. Are you saying that I'm not my own self? Uh, it, it just. Again, I, I applaud Pixar for trying to depict the human mind. No easy task. Uh, and I think that they gave it a decent shot, but all the dots don't connect. I'd also say that I think this is not a good film for children. Uh, why? Well, uh, I think that the messages of the film won't be appreciated by children. I think they're uh, a little bit too adult. Uh, I also think the middle of the film is just downright, as I said, boring. I mean, they're going to be like, I'm super bored. I mean, I was like, oh, man, maybe I should like go get another snack from the concession stand. Like, I was really like, oh, I'm, I'm not having a good time. Uh, and then also, it wouldn't be a Pixar movie if someone didn't commit suicide. Ah, oh, Pixar, you just can't help yourself. Uh, we'll talk about that more in the spoiler review. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, I, I guess I'd have to say that uh, Inside Out is certainly an improvement on some of the films that Pixar has been making lately, but 
uh, at the end of the day, they're just a little bit too inside their own heads on this one. All right, that's my non-spoiler review. I look forward to talking about the movie with you down below in the comments. This is the non-spoiler review, so don't put any spoilers in there. Uh, and then also, uh, there is a contest from Channel Frederator, uh, which uh, Beyond the Trailer is affiliated with. And uh, all you have to do is enter your email, and you're, uh, you have the chance to win some Inside Out swag. Uh, so there's a link for that in the video description. All right, thanks so much for, uh, for watching, and you can check out that spoiler review once you've seen the film. Bye.